In the coming weeks, our in-depth segment will be devoted to interviewing each of the four gubernatorial candidates. These interviews will be 50 minutes in length and conducted separately. Moderator Susan Goodell begins with independent candidate Dr. Irvin Yen. Thank you, Rich. We are going to jump right in with Dr. Irvin Yen, who is running for governor of Oklahoma, because I think you have a lot to say. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I think I do. I think you do. Well, I am so pleased to meet you, and thank you for coming to our studios to do this important interview. First of all, Doctor, I'd like you to tell us just a quick little bit about yourself to introduce yourself. Okay. I'm a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist uh, for most of my career. I've been in practice for 38 years. I grew up here in Oklahoma City, northwest Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. I actually moved to Oklahoma City from Taiwan when I was four years old, and that's because my parents are Chinese, so I'm not Taiwanese. And uh, they were lucky they moved to Taiwan before the communist takeover in 1949. They were afraid the communists would take over Taiwan. So we moved here when I was four, and I've lived in three homes in northwest Oklahoma City over my entire life that are within a mile and a half of each other. Yeah, this is your home. Oklahoma is your yeah. home. I, I went to Putnam City High School, OU for undergrad, got Go a degree Pirates. in zoology, <laughs> and uh, med school at OU and residency at OU. So you also served as a state senator, so you got an interest in politics, and now you have decided uh, to run for governor. What was the impetus for that decision? Well, you know, originally I, I sort of was disappointed in the state's response to COVID, mm. okay? That was the first. But then, since then, many other things have happened, you know, regarding the tribes, mm -hmm. uh, regarding, uh, you know, uh, the Roe versus Wade being overturned, mm -hmm. uh, some scandals, I call them scandals that involve taxpayer monies. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, that's when I decided, you know, we need to change. We need to change. And I think Oklahomans want to change. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to run. And I was a Republican, okay? But about a year ago, I switched to an independent because I was getting weekly emails from the state Republican Party, and I think that the National Party probably did this too, that was saying that, you know, if you're a real Republican, you're always against any sort of uh, even temporary mask mandate. Uh, and number two, you're always against any sort of vaccine mandate, whether it's COVID or anything else. And then number three, mm -hmm. if you're a real Republican, you believe that Donald Trump really won the election. And I say no, no, and no. And, and we currently have mask mandates for employees, for anybody that works at the hospital. And we got a, right. we got a flu vaccine mandate and we got a COVID vaccine mandate. So yeah, the, 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 the states failed there. So it seemed to you, a follow-up question on this, it seemed to you that some common sense things were missing, in your opinion. Absolutely, and science, okay. science. science. I wanted, my next question is, um, at this point in time, at the time of this interview, what do you think is the biggest issue facing Oklahoma and her citizens right now? Well, I, I, really, I think it's, it's three issues, okay? One okay. is the overturning of Roe versus Wade, and we have the strictest abortion ban in the country, and that is not good for Oklahoma. Number two, we've got to fix education. And, you know, lots of candidates like to say they're going to fix education, and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. And our current governor has been there for four, almost four years. Has he fixed education? Uh, no. My other opponent, the state superintendent, has been in her office for almost eight years. Has she fixed education? No. In fact, we've, got, we've gotten worse. And then the third issue is I'm just sick and tired of the far right extremists, far left extremists, button heads over issues that I don't think are that important. And I think most Oklahomans don't think are that important. In Oklahoma, that's, you know, we're really red state in Oklahoma. Yeah, but, but, well, yeah, but, but especially our politicians, okay? Mm -hmm. But I just don't think Oklahoma voters are that way. Okay. I think most of them are moderates. You touched on education, and that was going to be one of my next questions. I'd like to talk about the state of um, education in Oklahoma, funding equity for schools, um, support vouchers, uh, the book bans we've heard about, and parental say that it's not only a state issue but a national issue. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to fix it. And, and, you know, number one, we give the teachers a pay raise. And for some reason, the governor and the state superintendent like to uh, take credit for giving the teachers a pay raise, okay, a significant pay raise. Well, no, he was not governor when the significant pay raise happened. Mm -hmm. 
and she had nothing to do with that significant pay raise. It was in response to the teacher walkout. And the legislature responded, although they should have given teachers a pay raise well before that, but the legislature voted for a teacher pay raise and increased taxes to do that. And who voted for that bill? Mm -hmm. I did as a state senator. So I'm the one who was responsible for that. And so that's the first thing we got to do. And I think, you know, the way we fund education in Oklahoma is, is based, partly based upon ad valorem taxes. So that means in all of Oklahoma, different areas of the state, mm -hmm. if they got a lot of oil and gas right now, they don't have any trouble funding education. Yeah. Now, if the price of oil and gas plummets, then they will have trouble. So I think another thing we need to do is to try and make the monies that are available to all these districts more equitable so that a student in Podunk, Oklahoma get, gets a, just as good education as someone in Edmond, Oklahoma. You know, your education should not be dependent on what zip code you live. And, and, and I think that we are not going to fix education by worrying about CRT being taught in schools because I don't think it is. I don't think we're going to fix education by worrying about what bathroom a kid goes to. And I don't think we're going to fix it by worrying about whether it's a girl or a boy that's playing a sport. So I'm going to follow up on that. So that was going to be one of my questions. So let's talk about that. While it may not fix education, are those important issues to you or do you think they're important to the state of Oklahoma? Or are they something that is secondary? I, I don't think they're that important, certainly for education. Okay. And then school vouchers, I'm adamantly opposed to school vouchers being used for private school. Why? Yeah. Because, well, two reasons. During the COVID, when the COVID first started, I had three of our five children in college, and they did that online virtual learning, and they all three hated it, and they yeah. all three thought it did not work. Okay? Mm -hmm. The other reason I'm against school vouchers is what happened to Epic Charter Schools. Everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Millions, how many millions, we don't know, of taxpayer dollars were absconded with and I hope two or three people go to prison over that. So how do you think that happened? How do you think that got so far down the road? That well I think somebody wasn't paying attention or neglecting or knew it was happening and, and let it happen. Okay mm -hmm. so who who was not paying attention? I think it was probably the governor and probably our state superintendent. Those are two of my opponents in this race. Mm. So let's talk about this race for a minute. Uh, the polls, I'm going and looking at the polls, they're all about um, Stanton Hoffmeister. Sure. There's not even a mention. Right. So at this point, what's going through your head? And, and frankly, why do you stay in the race? Yeah, number one, those polls are push polls. And they're paid for by either Democrats or Republicans or, or independent expenditures that are trying to unseat our current governor. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not objective, they're not unbiased. And I know that because I got a poll two nights ago from supposedly a respected polling company. In fact, the email said, we're unbiased, we're nonpartisan. And so I filled it out. I said I was an independent. I said I was definitely gonna vote. And I said I was gonna vote for Erwin Yin. They misspelled my name. And you know what happened when I clicked submit? What? It said, I could not be a part of this survey. Mm. Why would that be? Because I'm a registered independent? Because mm. I voted for Erwin Yin? That's not right. That is not right. And so here's what I'll tell you. We have over 410,000 registered independents now in Oklahoma. There's something going on. Oklahomans are sick and tired of this far right, far left extremism. 410,000. Mm. Four years ago, in the midterm election, about 1.1, 1.2 million people voted. This year, because of the overturning of Roe versus Wade, I suspect more people are going to vote. But I don't need 50% to win. I only need one more vote than the second place person. And that could be 34%. Now, you know what 34% of 1.1, 1.2 million is? It's about 420,000. 
and we currently have 410,000 registered independents. So all, all we got to do is get a few moderate Republican votes and a few moderate Democratic votes, and we can do that, and that is how we're going to win, and we're going to. All right, we have a few minutes left. I want to jump into the abortion issue. Absolutely. Big issue in the state of Oklahoma sure. and nationally. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, we, we've got to fix this, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not good for the state. It's certainly not, we're not going to attract Fortune 500 companies here. You know, we've got to fix infrastructure too, but we've got to get rid of the strictest abortion ban in America. How do we do that? We send it to a vote of the people. If the legislature won't do it, which, why wouldn't they? You know what? What, if you're a state senator or a state rep, what, what's your excuse for not sending it to the voting people? Well, if they won't do it, we get the signatures and we do it. In the meantime, until we do that, we make sure that sexually active women and their partners mm. have ready access to the morning after pill. And, and at no charge. As a taxpayer, I would rather pay for that than the consequences of, of a pregnancy that they can't handle. And then number two, we make sure that women who do want to terminate their pregnancies, for whatever reason they have, that I should have no say in, and the government should have no say in, they have access to travel to another state where it can be accomplished legally and safely. And then the last thing, the courts could look at this because not all religions believe that life begins at conception. And so this could, our, the strictest abortion ban in the country could be a violation of of religious freedom. Do you believe um, uh, there is a cutoff period of where abortion should be allowed, though, in the term of a pregnancy? Oh, if we put this to a vote of the people, I think we write the bill in such a manner that it will pass. Hmm. And I absolutely believe that a woman has the right to choose in the first trimester. I don't believe life begins at conception. Why? I'm been a cardiac cardiothoracic anesthesiologist. I've taken care of many heart patients, heart transplant patients, lung transplant patients, as well as kidney transplant patients. And you tell me when the donor of those organs becomes a donor, when they have no brain activity or they're brain dead. Mm -hmm. That's when they become a donor. So we consider life as ended for them. Even though technically, yes, they're alive. They got a blood pressure, their heart's right. working. Well, a fertilized egg, does not have brain waves, does not have brain activity, because it does not have a brain. Yeah. I've never thought of that. I've never heard that. Um, and, and, and remember, I have always been a modern. When I was a Republican, right. I voted against strict abortion bill, anti-abortion bills. And that got me on the front page of USA Today and on headline news. So all you got to do is Google Senator Yin calls Bill insane, and you will find it. Okay, I will so do that. So the word insane made me famous. And, and when they told me <laughs> that, I kind of went, maybe I should have said that. And then I went, yeah, I should, because it's true. Because you yeah. can't pass back then a law that's against Roe versus Wade, because it will be overturned by the first court it goes to. And thankfully, that bill, the day after I was all over the media, Governor Fallon vetoed it kind of surprised mm -hmm. me, but it was the right thing to do. Quickly, I'd like to end our interview with getting your comments about energy versus environment in Oklahoma, uh, and then any closing remarks you'd like to make. Sure, yeah. You know, I, I have no doubt that global warming is happening, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I used to not think this, but now I, I'm starting to think that what man has been doing is contributing to that. So anything we can do to slow that down, I think is great. You know. Having more renewables in the state is great, okay? But I'm fully supportive of oil and gas. And, and you know, we're gonna be reliant on the oil and gas industry for a long, long time. You know, just because you got renewables, just because you say, yeah. let's manufacture only electric cars, that doesn't mean magically all the gas cars are gonna disappear. So we will be reliant on oil and gas for a long time. So here's what I'd like to end with. Please go out and vote. Again, we don't need 50% of the vote to win. I need all Oklahomans to show up to vote. This, is a, this will be the first time in Oklahoma history that we have a chance to elect an independent hmm. to the governor's office, not somebody who's beholden to the right, far right or the far left. We can do this 
with 420,000 votes. So independence will not be a swing vote this year that helps a Democrat or a Republican. They will put me in office and that will be a mandate to our legislature that Oklahomans are sick and, are sick and tired of this far right, far left bickering. Mm -hmm. Let's do what, what most Oklahomans want with the issues that are in the middle. So please, yeah, have your uh, viewers uh, check us out on social media. Social media is exploding right now. All right. There's over 400, well, almost 400,000 people have been looking at our posts. Okay. And, uh, you know, 400,000 people can change the world. Dr. Yen, it has been a pleasure to meet you and, and, and get to know you a little better. I want to thank you so much for your time uh, to share your thoughts.